How you doing? This is Yaakov with a beautiful idea. And the merit of this beautiful idea, may everybody, uh, everyone draw close to God and be able to uh, find the truth which illuminates our path. So, basically, in this week's Parsha, in this week's Parsha, um, around the world, it's, it's Parsha Dvayigash. Um, or the second to last parsha right before the end of the book of of, of Genesis Breshit and then we're going to begin uh, Shemot which is uh, I believe translated as as uh, Shemot is, is names in in Hebrew I think sh- and in English I have to look at it again what, what um but uh, we're right at the end of, of Genesis of Breshit and I'm going to give you a little beautiful idea based off of Rabbi, Nat- Rabbi Natan of Breslov Rabbi Nachman's prime disciple Hashem, which I love so much um, and so does anybody who tastes the sweetness of Rabbi Nachman's works all of it was reco- was, uh, was pretty much recorded and like uh, uh, saved and, and uh, preserved Hashem and uh, we're very fortunate so uh, one of the things that we'll talk about right uh, right here is uh, this is a beautiful beautiful part of the story of the sons of, of Yaakov Avinu of, of Jacob where they see all the beautiful brothers Reuben, Shimon, Levi Yehuda uh, every, everybody Sechar, Zan, Aftali, God, Asher everybody Yosef Benyamin all these beautiful, amazing people and more um, were they were they after the selling they sold their brother to slavery. He went through this whole clarification process. Yosef, Yosef at Sadik, Yosef the righteous person, where all the way at the end he ended up going to prison, coming out, interpreting dreams, you know and. You know, being an amazing advisor to Paro, where nobody else can interpret uh, that happening, and uh, and then and then all the way at the end, after being correct and wonderful, in the middle of the famine, Yaakov's sons are coming down, Jacob's sons are coming down, the rest of them, and a beautiful thing happens. He tells him to get his younger brother with his father. His father won't let him, doesn't want to let him go, but has to to get more food and to listen to the master of Egypt at that time so to speak was Yosef at Sadiq even though I want to let you know people uh, Paro literally uh, is written in the text as Paro said that I'm he literally is the Paro is the controller of all of Egypt however the truth is that Yosef really was the controller because um, Egypt worked really by um, by by wisdom, so actually Paro knew seventy languages, and Yosef at Sadik um, knew seventy one so really, if everybody knew about this, that would be it would also be a different story, but already Paro tried to convince everybody he was a god, so that 's another situation altogether um, I already another human being trying trying to convince everybody they're a god, um, and he went out of his way to do that too <laughs> um, so what is it? What did uh, when it came to Yehuda? When it came, came to all the brothers finally meeting Yosef at Sadiq, Yosef the righteous person, their brother, and the truth is Yaakov Avinu, their forefather knew their father knew exactly um, who Yosef was, how holy and special he was. That's why he was so devastated um, when he thought he lost him, uh, because he had such high hopes for him. He had a dream. Uh, Yosef originally had a dream of all his father and mother and everybody bowing down to him. Everything, and Yaakov actually was looking forward to that dream coming true. If you take a look at the sentences actually surrounding the dream, so uh, which is really cool. Um, this is a very very exciting uh, a parsha because finally Judah, Yehuda, and all the brothers are approaching uh, Yosef, and uh, they are. You know, they're in in a, in a uh, of of close communication, where who knows what could break out? Either the biggest hug or the biggest fight, whatever the situation is. And Yosef comes and says, um, Yosef comes and says, after they already said, you know, well, you know, you're my master, you know, 
slaves, whatever the situation is, Yosef says, I'm Yosef. Um, he's had enough. He can't hold in anymore. And he's, prote- and, and he's played his part very well. He wants to make sure that they did shuva, they did, did repented according enough to reveal himself. Are they ready to reveal uh, that he should reveal himself? That he, even though he's the uh, viceroy, the second in command of all of Egypt, he's their brother. And uh, they thought their brother was dead the whole time. Rabbi Natan of Breslov writes over there that the selling of Yosef, the selling of the tzaddik, is the selling of advice of the righteous. It's it's the metaphor. It's the uh, it's the the uh, it's the uh, what do you call it? It's likened to when they sold Yosef, selling the advice of the righteous. It, 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 that not just the not just uh, uh, not just the Jewish people, but how human beings uh, can sell correct advice and all the way at the end Yosef comes up and he says I'm Yosef he said you thought you sold me you thought you could run away from me but you always need me you'll always need me because not because not as a grudge not because Hashem sent me I'm the mess this whole situation happened you thought you sold me you thought you ran away from my advice because I was crazy, you thought I was too young, you thought you were smarter, okay, fine. But in the end, you're going to come back because you're going to realize all the wealth, physical and spiritual, everything that you're looking for is going to be by me, says Yosef at Sadiq. So, Yosef at Sadiq, uh, their brother Yosef, was, was giving them a beautiful, beautiful lesson. Rabbi Nachman's works, um, he speaks about the Sadiq point. This righteous point that every person has within them. There's a certain point at which you're doing something. When you're doing something good, that the that the, the main point of that thing that's good that you're doing is from your righteous point. You have a righteous point, right? That's the point at which uh, at which your your soul is connected directly to God. Okay, that's your righteous point, and you in order to bring it out. So we listen to advice of the righteous. The advice of the righteous, the righteous themselves have taken this point and expanded it to such a huge degree where it consumes them, where it's pretty, basically, they're all good. They're all good, okay? And, and that even if they make a mistake, so they do tshuva, they repent, and that's why they're all good. So no matter what, what looks bad or what looks good or whatever, they say, whatever looks bad is going to be turned to good. Don't don't worry about it. You don't even have to like 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 think about it. A person who's working on themselves day in day out, always that's their whole life. That they that they, you know that they to, to gaining wisdom and to really and, and to and to share it with people and to whatever it is. That person's like you know, you know that person's really really has a very very not just a high place in heaven and on earth, but also his advice is so powerful and so strong. So the truth is, I thought about this idea and, and realizing that everybody has a certain righteous point there's also likened to like a father and mother and, and sister and brother and family members and friends and and acquaintances and teachers everybody has a certain positive point and that point they're they are chacham they are a wise person they're a righteous person that they want to give out from their heart or they they wish they could give out from the heart but they're just this is all how how it comes out times sift through the advice Sometimes there's some stuff in the advice, not like Yosef at Sadiq. Sometimes you have to sift through advice to see what points resonate with you, what points you can actually apply. Instead of just taking the person's, because the person's, uh, I don't want to say this, but the, the person could be an idiot that you're listening to. Um, but there's one thing that they said that was good. That one thing was worth it. That one thing could literally pay off and save you two years worth of, uh, of, 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 of um, bothersome things, of uh, of crap, you know, whatever it is. Um, so, really, by taking, by taking a look, by being able to see, listen. Sometimes you've heard information before, and you'll you're, you're gonna he- you hear it, you hear it now again, and and it's really really it's like I already know that okay, but sometimes you're hearing it again for because you're this time not not you're not hearing. You you heard the idea last time. Now Hashem wants you to hear something new. Listen closely. There's something else you have to hear. Okay. Everybody has this righteous point with them. Everybody has this thing. Some people can will embrace it. Some people 
embrace it. But everybody has it to a degree. Even a person that you might consider evil or God forbid, there is a place you can learn from them where not to go. <laughs> and that's the good that they can offer. Okay, So don't sell the advice. Don't sell the advice that's free. There's free advice right in front of you trying to get there. Trying to show you how a business is run. How, uh, how to treat people. What not to say to people. Um, how you know uh, how to treat yourself uh, there's there's so many different things you know uh, how to make friends uh, just listen to the people around you learn from the good that they have that's the righteous point that everybody has and when you're able and you're prepared to do that you're willing to be able to call the tzaddik Hashem Hashem is righteous he's in every situation he's with everybody and you're able to show how the advice is everywhere. You're able to show how you can learn from everyone. You, you're able to show how everybody has something re redeemable about them. And that's the righteous aspect of them. That's the, that's the part at which if that part can expand, you could believe in that part within them. Do tremendous wonders. But better yet, while you're at it, while you're learning... Believe in that part within yourself. Believe that what God wants you to hear from that person is not all the crud and things that you don't like. Listen to the things that you can apply, that you can that you like, okay? Or take one message, take a little small thing that can be applied for you, okay? Because then, for you, you've taken that person that other people have spoken so badly about could be, and now you could take him and make it in, and make them into somebody something else. You can take them and say, you know what? They said all this other stuff. I'm not talking about all this other stuff. But I'll tell you the good thing that they did say is this. And there, and and you can say speak speak about it to yourself, to your friends, to your family, whatever it is. Learn from your family. Learn from your friends. Learn from your parents, which you might have hurt been hurt hurt by, or your friends, which you might have been hurt by. Learn how to make friends. Learn how to learn how to learn how to deal with the situations that you're in. Learn from the wisdom. Learn from the righteous point that's in everyone. And most importantly, learn from the learn from the one that's all consumed by his righteousness, meaning that he's full of it. That he's full, not full of it. He's full of this good point, of this righteous point, that which has such beautiful advice. That this beautiful advice can lead you all the time, every, all the places that you need to go. May everybody merit to find the truth, Sadiq, of the generation and the real righteous generation, and also witness and be able to be aware of the righteousness within everyone and to be able to listen to it, listen to the voice, listen to the inner voice of the righteousness that, that, that's breathing through everyone. And may everybody have a beautiful, beautiful week. Um, it's raining over here in Israel. And uh, it's, it's very, rain is a miracle. And may everybody be able to, to take all the things that, they, that seem bad, seem, seem hard, and be able to switch it over. How many people complain about rain? Now we now you know rain is a miracle. The Gemara says so. The sages of um, the Jewish people say so, hundred percent. Also, you know, without rain, you don't have crops uh, that are that really are uh, you know essential to our to our li livelihood and our living. And well, Hashem, you know, water is a very very important commodity. You'd be able to take something, the same thing that makes one person feel uncomfortable, is could be the lifeboat for somebody else. Never throw away good advice. There's always advice in everything. Have a wonderful week. Bye.